Today's movie proves that man is the most dangerous game once and for all. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Brian Trenchard Smith's dystopian nightmare, Turkey Shoot. Released in 1982, Turkey Shoot is an Ausploitation classic wherein society's misfits are shipped off to reprogramming camps with the idea of making them better citizens. However, no one's really interested in doing that, and instead the prisoners become potential targets in a game that finds rich people hunting them down for sport. It's a film that's sure to appeal to anyone who loved the most dangerous game, John Woo's Hard Target, or the underrated Ice-T slash Rutger Hauer flick Surviving the Game. But enough about that. Can Turkey Shoot kill enough camp prisoners to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Ah, oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by Michael Minikin, who made a very generous donation to request this film. Sorry it took me so long to get to it, Michael. Hope the wait was worth it. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on stock footage. Feels like a Bruno Mattei movie already. Sweet, it's just like having a two monitor setup. Credits. Hey, it's Steve Railsback. I always thought of Railsback as basically budget Dennis Hopper. Railsback should have been as famous as Hopper, but it just didn't pan out that way for him. And Olivia Hussey. Hussey's probably best known to horror films for her work in the seminal slasher film Black Christmas, but many of you will also remember her from your freshman English class when she got naked in Romeo and Juliet. I gotta be honest, these leads have me thinking this movie might be too good for this show. And title card. That's pretty decent for a low budget exploitation flick. Turkey Shoot is a weird title though. <laughs> Linda Stoner? That's my kind of chick right there. Also, check out that kung fu fighting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Director of photography John McClane. Guess this is what he did before he got stuck at that Nakatomi Tower Christmas party. Score by Brian May? I love Queen. What's that? That's not Brian May from Queen? That's Brian May, a film composer? Oh, my bad. And directed by the incomparable Brian Trenchard Smith. We last saw him in Night of the Demons 2. Oh, Mount Doom? Must be one of those Hobbit movies. Hmm, guess the A-Team's regular van was in the shop. That truck is carrying the most precious of cargo. People in ugly jumpsuits. And they're off in dreamland. At least until Olivia here realizes she's late for football practice. Um, did she just wake up into a dream sequence? Oh man, yeah, you don't want to steal Hummel figurines from this place. They take shoplifting very seriously. And Pimp Hand. Holy shit, it's Australian Napoleon Dynamite. I bet ligers are real in Australia. Probably man-eaters. And since one good football practice deserves another, here you go. Hey guys, thanks for listening to my podcast. Oh god, he's Tim Pool. The government calls us traitors because we oppose its ideology. Uh-oh, the FCC is here to shut him down. So, come here often. And Olivia has issues. I didn't do anything. I shouldn't be here. She's kind of like Dante and Clerks. But I wasn't even supposed to be here today. Wait a minute, are they taking them to one of those Nexium camps? Will Keith Raniere be there? Oh wait, it's run by Assistant District Attorney Jack McCoy apparently. Not gonna lie, this looks more like Jonestown than a Nexium retreat. Quint, is that you? I'm talking about Sharkin. And welcome to Jonestown. Well, the welcoming committee is bringing in the new recruits, young Corey Haim is plotting his escape. Um, why does Quinn sound like George Carlin? Come, come. Right over here, my darling. I will say I admire his Devo cosplay. He's whipping it very good. Hold up. How come no one told me Yahoo Sirius was in this movie? God, now he looks like Geraldo crossed with the king and Jim Cotta. This dude is a chameleon. Yahoo's buddy clearly doesn't like what's going on here. I'll kill that bastard one day. Linda Day George. Show them how it's done. Bastard! Bastard! Oh, sweet. This guy has a four monitor streaming setup. That's baller. I bet he's killing it on Twitch with that rig. Oh man, I love what you've done with the place. The wood says 70 serial killer basement, but the tribal stuff screams white colonizer. Wait a minute, is he playing chess with Boss Hog? I'll get those Duke boys by God. And it turns out Boss Hog has his eye on Daisy Duke. That one there, the one with the long dark hair. She's rather nice, hmm? But it looks like Geraldo might be trying to muscle in on her first. He's clearly assuming she's into whips. Um, is he gonna give her a shower of the golden variety? Thought it'd be fun to watch. 
Rails back is a perv confirmed. Turns out this is just Rails back trying to distract him. So Geraldo's gonna play him a little whip hop music. He's cornered by Geraldo, but surprise, he just got clubbed from behind by Ox Baker? Dude's really working his stick. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. The stick he beat Rails back with. Ah, oh, good. It's time for the next round of Squid Game. Evil Boss's wardrobe provided by Botany 500. I think Banana Republic took care of everyone else. I don't know. I'm not really feeling all that invested in this year's version of the Hunger Games. Anyway, we're just here to learn that Rails back is a rabble rouser and a Escape artist. Paul Landers, re-ed Camp 42, escaped. Camp 70, released on forged papers. So, if you're wondering what this place is, it's basically one of those Nexium retreats Keith Ranieri ran. We will make certain that you have ample opportunity for self-improvement. And as a demonstration of power, Ox Baker is gonna heart punch this random chick. Then he gives her a heapin' helpin' of pimp hand. I mean, he hit Ernie Lad way harder. Just saying. Uh, Work his life. Uh, oh, so they're capitalists. Looks like someone's training for a Hell in a Cell match with Ox. Here's a live look at me working on my overhead press. <laughs> no, no, cut. Linda Day George, take it away again. Bastard! Hey, they got fish for dinner. That's pretty fantastic. Yahoo's like, man, this sashimi is the bomb. I'm gonna be honest, I really can't get a read on this guy. The hair is Sam Waterston, the pipe is Abe Lincoln, and the name Thatcher is a UK Prime Minister. I mean, make up your mind. Railsback is like, here's looking at you, Grid. Next, everyone hits the showers, which I can't show you because PrudeTube hates boobs. Hey, wait a minute, that's Sting in his Dune outfit. I mean, I'm assuming the cod piece is there. Roxanne! Then it gets even weirder. Hey ladies, what do you think of my Jeffrey Dahmer costume? If he tells them they look good enough to eat, this video is over. From there, we jump over to a totally different movie. This looks like one of those weird blindfold P-Hub videos I've heard about. Hey, wait, that doesn't feel like the barrel of a rifle. Oh God, it's discount Joan Collins. Probably just plotting on how to stick at the Crystal Carrington again. It's been my experience, Charles, that it's less the size of one's gun that counts. Hey, hey, let's leave the sexy double entendres to me, lady. Man, you could say Steve Railsback is getting carried through this movie. Literally. This is really just me after a heavy leg day. Railsback is just channeling his inner Manson right now. Did I ever tell you about Helter Skelter and how I almost got a record deal? Back in the kill room, these guys are jibber jabbering, but I'm really more interested in the crappy PC in the background. Is that a trash 80 or a wang? Basically, this is about to turn into hard target slash surviving the game slash the most dangerous game because we're about to hunt humans. Oh, and it's got some Jim Cotta vibes too. Yes, I think your little um turkey shoot will be well appreciated in the right quarters. Title mention, Chug. Can you dig it? Judging by this scene, I'd say yes. Oh, he's planting a knife, literally. Maybe it will grow into a sword lily. While he's waiting for that thing to bloom, Alexis Colby is picking her prey. I choose you, Crystal Carrington. <laughs> Not gonna lie, looks like they're getting ready for most extreme elimination challenge. Where's Vic Romano? Wait a minute, is he running a high stakes human hunting ring or preaching a sermon? Turns out all of this is just a prelude to the main event. The lighting of discount Corey Haim. <laughs> Looks like Corey's got gas. Railsback is like, no, you're gonna wanna see this. Then it turns into a door song as Ox is like, let me light your fire. I gotta say, this year's Burning Man is off to a great start. Meanwhile, this guy sort of looks like evil George Michael. Uh-oh, time for a shower scene. Olivia Hussey is a dirty girl. Definitely getting strong flash dance vibes here. But here come the brown shirts, and they're cramming a big black rod in Railsback's mouth. Hell yeah. No, no, I mean this baton. Oh, nice, they're gonna conserve water by showering together. That's very eco-friendly. Look, it's really weirding me out to hear what basically sounds like George Carlin doing sexy talk. Yes, I'm gonna taste your honey. No. And clearly this guy missed the sexual harassment seminar on New Hire Day. But first, she needs to help him with his fly. She flees, but right into the arms of Ox. Why does this dude look like he's about to fight Indiana Jones and then get chopped up by a propeller? Then they let them go? That seems like a long tangent with no payoff movie. Anyway, let's check in on Private Pile, who's hard at work assembling his gun. 
I like that they're just basically hanging out on the lanai with the same wicker furniture my grandparents loved so much. Jesus, this rail's back like 410 or what? Can we get him an apple crate to stand on at least? While well, they're talking escape, Joan Collins is practicing for a steeplechase. Aw, oh, what the fuck is this? I had no idea Wolfman Jack was in this movie. Fulci I Zoom. Man, I kinda hope this is gonna turn into the beast in heat now. I'd be stunned if 20 of you have even seen that movie. Oh, he belongs to evil George Michael. I'm getting wham back together. Yeah, nothing much is happening, so might as well play some Oregon Trail. I'm not trying to die of dysentery again. Man, these early credit cards were weird looking. These are their get out of reprogramming camp free cards, but of course there's a catch. All you have to do is lead my guests on a chase for one day. Little sport. Railsback's like, no deal. No deal. See, I wasn't kidding. If you are still free at sundown, then the hunt will end. So if they survive till sundown, they're free. If they don't, they're dead. That sounds totally on the up and up. Looks like someone's about to make a point. Oh wait, she's choosing a crossbow instead of a traditional bow. That's a bolt decision. Ah oh, sweet, they're serving a big pot of melted gummy bears tonight. That night in the dorms, a real Donnybrook breaks out. Here's muzzle in your eye. Mountain establishing shot. So the prey is ready to get their head start. Seems unfair sending them out in bright yellow jumpsuits. They're gonna be pretty easy to spot. And now the newly revamped Wham is ready to take the show on the road. <laughs> Looks like they've both been woken up before they go-go. And Railsback is the last to leave. Nice of him to give Ox a kiss goodbye. Watch them wiggle, see them jiggle. Guess what? They've already found Sting. My god, the Sasquatch is laying the boots on him! Sting may need to call the police. Then he rips off his little toe, which is totally awesome. Clearly, he likes toe food. <laughs> sure hope that thing didn't belong to Bunny Lebowski. Over in another movie, one of Dutch's team is hot on the trail of the Predator. Oh god, are they driving around in the Ark 2? Do you kids even remember the Ark 2 TV show? Christ, I'm old. Then Geraldo gets ambushed. This guy's like, mind if I drop in unannounced? Yeah, this is for making us all sit through that special on Al Capone's vault. Breaker 1-9, Breaker 1-9, I got Smokies in the hen house, over. All right, let's check in on Olivia. Judging by her pace here, it's clear why her name is Olivia Hussey and not Olivia Hustle. Pick up the pace. Do you ever get that not so fresh feeling? Meanwhile, Railsback is running for the hills like this is an Iron Maiden song. And someone better get me Admiral Ackbar because it's a trap. Ah, yes, I too love that old time rock and roll. In another part of the woods, it looks like Joan Collins is horsing around. And if you're wondering how Sting is doing, it's not going well. By God, George the Animal Steel is setting him up for the body slam. Stop the damn match! Oh, not the backbreaker! He broke him in half! That was a serviceable JR. That's a lot of them in a row. And this guy's adventuring days are over. Took an arrow to the bicep. You hate to see it. <laughs> and another. This dude is never gonna bench again. Turns out the arrows are the least of his worries though. I bet he's feeling pretty run down right about now. While they're busy digging pieces of him out of the tire treads, Ox and this guy have seemingly wandered into a cannibal movie. Looks like Olivia is trying to ditch them though. Literally, hiding in a trench. That's deep. Oh, hi there. Olivia's doing a great job of hiding until this guy tries to show her his snake. Hell yeah. No, not like that. This real snake. Meanwhile, after the kill, Alexis flirts with John Carrington. Ox and his pal are still hunting Olivia, but all they find is Geraldo hanging around. But guess what? It's another trap. I could say he got logged in. Sorry, but I find this scene pretty offensive. Hey, wet t-shirt time! Guessing she won't drown with those personal flotation devices. Well, I mean, unless Joan Collins punches a hole in one. Anyway, let's check in on Railsback, who's run into George the Animal Steel. Getting very strong six million dollar man versus Bigfoot vibes here. Uh-oh, looks like Railsback is about to get cut down to size. Not gonna lie, that sounds way worse than a stick in the eye, which is exactly what he gives George the Animal here. And it gets worse because now he's half the mutant he used to be. Great, I feel like this movie has gotten off track and lost in the weeds. Literally. Oh yeah, told you that steeplechase training was gonna pay off. And now everyone's running like it's a far side video. Things are about to get biblical because we have some burning bushes. There's probably a hell yeah joke in there somewhere. Hey, fancy meeting you here. But here comes Railsback. Shot him right in the junk. You hate to see it. If you listen carefully, you can hear his fat crackling in the fire. 
Over in another part of the jungle, Alexis has finally cornered Crystal Carrington. Wait a minute, I don't think she ever wanted Blake Carrington. She wanted Crystal. Kinky. She's trying to pick up her next conquest, Railsback is dropping a log in the river. Hell yeah. No, I mean an actual log. After paddling through the river, they make a startling discovery. They never was any way out. How awesome would it be if that was Gilligan's Island? Or maybe they're gonna run along the shore and find the remnants of the Statue of Liberty. But before we can settle any of that, Ox wants a title match. Ooh, right in the bread basket. I feel like if Rails back can just find a plane propeller to push this guy into, he's got a shot. Things are looking pretty bleak for Rails back, but he goes right upside Ox's head with a foreign object. That should be an instant DQ, but the ref didn't see it. It's okay though, because Ox is gonna cheat with his gun. Wait, I think that's Olivia's music. A lot of wrestling references again this week. I hope you're all happy. Ox goes all Hemingway and watches his hand say a farewell to his arms. This is the face of a man who just realized he's going to spend the rest of his life wiping with a metal hook. Meanwhile, this is definitely not very handy. Oh yeah, top-notch effects work here. Just hide your hands in your sleeves. No one will ever know. Hey, no running with the machete. You'll poke your eye out. <laughs> yep, this is just like chariots of fire. But they're not out of the woods yet, partially because they just ran back into them, and also because they ran into evil George Michael. I kind of wondered if he dozed off. And clearly, he went to the Stormtrooper School of Marksmanship. Olivia serves as a decoy, and while he's distracted, Railsback is making a rear entry. Hell yeah. No, I mean he's sneaking up behind him. Oh yeah, that dude has a splitting headache, not even Excedrin can help. While he's in his death throes, Thatcher is on the horn. Hey, Brian, we got like 10 minutes left in this movie and two of us are still alive. Can we wrap this up? After some jibber jabber, he changes the rules of the game. The hunt is over. Shoot on sight, shoot to kill. But Olivia and Rail's back are armed too. Man, I wish the original version of Romeo and Juliet had been like this. I also feel like this should be in slow motion and they should be playing Freebird over it. Um, where the hell did this jet come from? I mean, other than a stock footage service. Maverick! Hey guys, it's getting late. I'm gonna jet. Back at camp, Olivia is being a vandal and Joan Collins does not approve. Oh, and the planes are gonna nuke the camp, basically. Seems like a perfectly reasonable response. And now we've got a cat fight. It was the best part of Dynasty, really. Bullseye! Gotta tell my grandkids this was just basically Call of Duty multiplayer. I mean, there aren't enough 10 year olds screaming racist slurs in my headset, but otherwise it checks out. Oh shit, he nailed Thatcher with that shot. And I can't show it because it basically obliterated him. But I can't show this aftermath. Bombs away! It's like a Gap Band song right now. You dropped the bomb on me. I'll give Brian Trenchard Smith this much. Dude gets maximum bang for the buck, even with a tiny budget. This is really impressive for such a tiny film. And after destroying the Capulets and Montague bases for good, Romeo and Juliet can finally hook up in peace. What? An end card? Been a while since we had one of those. Cue credits. So, what have we learned from Turkey Shoot? Well, I don't know if we learned anything other than that Romeo and Juliet would have been a lot better if Olivia Hussey had to hunt down her enemies and kill them. But we also got confirmation that Brian Trenchard Smith is a low budget auteur. Guy may not be a household name, but if you give him $20, he'll give you one hell of a fun movie. But enough about that. Can Turkey Shoe blast enough misfits to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Turkey Shoe delivers. We've got one bitten off toe, two amputated hands, a man burned alive, a mutant cut in half, and Thatcher getting obliterated by a machine gun. The gore is not the focus of this film, but there's more than enough here to justify giving this one a very respectable three barf bag rating. This is a sick and fun little flick. Looking for another Brian Trenchard Smith production? Then be sure to check out my review of Night of the Demons 2. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.